What is up YouTube, Holy Peps here. This is going to be ELO Hell Bootcamp, and this series is going to try to help you understand how to get it out of ELO Hell. What I consider ELO Hell is bronze and silver. It's not, ELO Hell really doesn't exist because ELO Hell pretty much means that you can't get out of it. But what this will do is it will teach you the fundamental basics that you're supposed to learn over like hundreds of games. And once you learn that, then obviously you're going to progress much faster than you would if you're just to play the hundreds of games and figure it out for yourself. Or you might actually never figure it out. And that's why a lot of people are stuck in like really low bronze, which would be bronze four or five. And then they wonder what is happening. So first off, let, is, let us look at the current matchup right now. So I'm playing Vladimir. I'm versing my friend Gnosis or uh, Tildax, and he's playing Gnosis. Now understand, he is not a like a serious Gnosis player, so there are times when I could have killed him as Vladimir. Like I know there's one at like level four or five where he really overextended, I could totally annihilate him, but that's not the point of this video. The point of this video is to show you the damage difference about building correctly and building against who you're versing, rather than just building the exact same build no matter what. So with Vladimir, the standard build that you see 99.9% .9 of the time is Vladimir is people will go, what is it, uh, Hextech Revolver, right? And then they'll start building, the, they may get Magic Pen Boots, but they'll usually go Will of the Ancients or they'll go Zonias. So that is what we're going to follow. And we'll see how it goes. Uh, majority of people should already know this matchup. Gnosis is favored in this matchup despite where many people uh, think that Vladimir is favored because if the Vladimir does not build correctly and builds like the standard Vladimir build he will get absolutely destroyed because he won't have the damage to uh, pretty much outpoke Gnosis. Gnosis what he's going to do is he's going to constantly sustain his lane so every time he auto attacks I think he's going to do three auto attacks at the time it takes me for my Q to come up which would obviously heal him on every auto attack. Then he Qs, so he'll be taking, I think he'll he'll heal about 80% of the damage that he takes. So he's going negative, but the problem is, is that he has teleport. So he'll just back and teleport in, he'll get another magic resist item, okay? Then constantly do that to the point where he actually has enough magic resist, or I should say he has spirit visage, which... I'm not able to damage him at all. He'll just be healing more than I damage him. And then he'll have about 300, 350 stacks. And then from that point on, it doesn't matter if I beat him in lane anymore because he's already fulfilled his goal. If he ha if he goes 0-2 and at 20 minutes has 320 stacks, it doesn't matter. Gnosis won lane. That is a win lane for Gnosis because he's going to go into team fights and he's going to destroy anyone who is right next to him. So that is why it is very critical to uh, look at Gnosis and build against him and counter him correctly. So right there, I could have probably have uh, pulled underneath Gnosis and killed him. But again, my f my friend is not a pro Gnosis player. He does not play Gnosis at like near platinum level. So he he makes mistakes, but he's just here to show you guys what happens when a Gnosis, when you build Vladimir the way that a majority of people will tell you how to play him correctly at a high level and you play against a Gnosis and then it's like, shit, that does not work at all. But how is Gnosis, uh, or how do you beat Gnosis as Vlad? And it's pretty simple. So we're gonna skip ahead a little bit. But as you can see here, at this point in time, I'm level six, he's level five and He's just going to continue stacking. There's nothing I can do. I'm going to back here and grab... I think it's about right here. Yeah. Now, he has a uh, Crowl. So, he already has his Magic Resist item. He's going for Spirit Visage, which is pretty standard. And as you can see here, he's just focused on stacking. I'm trying to poke him down as much as possible. But there's really nothing I can do at this point because I went pretty much Hextech. And that's standard what you do. You go Hextech Revolver on Vladimir. That's just pretty much the standard of the standard build with Vladimir. Everyone will tell you this is the correct way to build him. But you have to understand that against certain champions, you can't just build one way. You have to basically diversify your build according to what you're versing. So we're going to skip a little bit farther ahead.
And you can see here, his stacks progressively gets better. And he's now out sustaining me. I have to back. And let's just skip to 13. And yes, I know my CSing is really, really bad for this stage, but pretty much, if you just look at it, like, look at that right there. And that's Gnosis. So at 1525, he ends up killing me. And he has 267 stacks. So he's on cue to get 300 stacks by 20 minutes. This is with a standard Gnosis build. He went Spirit Visage and I went Hextech. So obviously he's going to beat me later down the road because he has a shit ton of stacks. He has Magic Resist. I am Vladimir. I Usually I'll get uh, Zonia's next or I'll get Will of the Ancients. But at this point... Let's just say, instead of going for the uh, the stuff to build Zonia's Hourglass, if I would have went Will of the Ancients, it wouldn't have helped me at all. At this point, nothing I build would stop Gnosis from self-sustaining lane. Like, there's a few things I could have built. Like, maybe if I would have went farmed a little bit better and I would have went Zonia's, or I shouldn't say Zonia's, but I went Needlessly Large Rod, I might be able to do a little bit more damage, but there's no way I was going to kill Gnosis. The second he would ultimate, he would gain enough range to where he could slow me and kill me. So I'd basically be poking him down and forcing him to recall after the course of about like four to five minutes, which then his TP would be back up. So pretty much what I'm saying is from this point on, because I went revolver, it was impossible for me to beat him without a gank. Now we're going to look at game ten, uh, game two. Okay, this is game two. Now, oh, and I should probably put the webcam there. So, I tried to make game two kind of the same pre-6... As in, like, there was a chance where I could have killed Gnosis, but I did not want that to influence the lane whatsoever. So, pretty much I did not kill him. Like, I let him get a pass on that. Because if I killed him, then people would say, well, then you got a kill pre-6. So, you had a huge advantage, and that's the reason why you steamrolled him. But, now let's look when I skip a little bit. Alright, so now I'm doing my first back. Now, if you remember correctly, I went Revolver uh, when I did the first one. Alright? But Revolver gave me the sustain, which I did not need versus Gnosis because Gnosis is not going to poke me. Gnosis is going to be too busy stacking. And now I have Magic Pen Boots and one book. Now, compared to damage when I was doing last game, or I guess you can't really see the entire last game, but you'll see that I'm able to outpoke him very, 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 very well. Like, let's look at that damage. OP. And yeah, y you see? He's not able to sustain lane. Even knowing he has Spectral Crawl, it's not helping him whatsoever. Because I'm out damaging him. So, if I continue this up, he's going to be having to focus on attacking me more than he is stacking. So, I'll be winning in that perspective. Even if he kills me, right? If he manages to kill me somehow because I'm going so aggro, which he really shouldn't be able to kill me unless I'm screwing around, he's not stacking. And for Gnosis to be effective, he has to have stacks. So this is what I'm talking about building according to what you're versing. Because usually, you wouldn't be going Sork Shoes. It's Usually you'd be going Revolver. Maybe you do rush Sork Shoes. Maybe you get a little bit of poke in. But usually you'll be going Hextech Revolver. And that's just the standard. 
So we're gonna a little bit more. Now, another item that you never see Vlad's Rush is, uh, I think that's Hunting Mask? I, mean, I don't really know what it's called, but pretty much uh, first item of Lindry's, Lindry's Torment. And the reason why I get that is because I need Magic Penetration. Uh, void Staff, it costs too much to complete, so I'm not going to go Void Staff. And also, Lindry's does percent damage health as burn, so... Yeah, just look at that. He has 141 stacks. It's 1130. So by the time it gets to 20 minutes, he'll probably have around 200 stacks, which means that he did not have a good lane phase. And that's pretty much what it should be. And this is where he was a total pansy, and I had to chase him for quite some time. But yeah, I'm just able to force him out of lane 24-7. And let's skip a little bit further ahead. Uh, uh, let's see here. And I finally have Lindry's. Now this is uh, 1430. Gnosis has 168 stacks. And just look at that. Every time I queue him, he's slowly getting burned down. I shouldn't say slowly. He's actually pretty damn fast. And he just came back in the lane. Now this... He actually had me there. I kind of overextended very, very, very hardcore. But, like I was saying before... This is the difference between itemization and following a standard build. If you did this against anyone other than Gnosis, you probably would lose. Because the reason why you go a Hextech Revolver is because Vlad has a weak pre-6. So he's not that good pre-6. But you need the sustain for lane. But when you're versing someone who you don't have any need to like be scared of them because they're not going to poke you out. Gnosis is going to be too busy trying to stack rather than fight you. And if he does fight you, then you're preventing him from stacking. Lindry's is a good alternative. But you'll never see anyone say rush Lindry's on Vladimir versus Gnosis. You just... Yeah. And what you need to take away from this is pretty damn simple. This is pretty key against versing like Garen versus Riven. Garen versus Riven, if you're playing the Riven, majority of time I'll see them go either a Doran Blade because they know that they can't really beat Garen if they go in. So they'll usually want to just sustain lane until 6 and then get a gank, which can set them further ahead. But this is a good... I, I want to say a good example because Vladimir should always lose to Gnosis if he goes to Hextech Revolver route, but if he goes to Linji's route, he should almost always win, unless the jungler has a massive presence in this lane. Now, I don't know what else to say other than diversify your builds when you're depending on what champion you're versing. Figure out their strengths and weaknesses. If you're playing Vladimir versus a Maokai, can pretty much do the exact same thing as what I'm doing here because Maokai really Maokai is more of an HP tank doesn't have that good of DPS and Vladimir should easily be able to wreck Maokai that's a good example uh, trying to think of a few other examples maybe Ari versus Victor uh, when I play Ari I tend to go Morillocon that's kind of the standard right now but if I'm versing a Victor or a Cassiopeia, because they're really high poke, and if they touch you, you pretty much lose about 30 to 45% of your HP, I tend to go Athens and Holy Grail. And many people ask me, well, why do you do that? Well, it's not because I like Athens and Holy Grail more than Morlocon, it's because I'm versing someone who can out damage me. So. If I want to make sure that I win the lane phase more consistently, it'd be better to build a magic resist item 
when I'm versing someone who has higher poke than me, then build a damage item, which means that if they do ha happen to hit me, I will most likely lose the fight or I'll lose a trade. So that's just my opinion. Uh, let me know what you guys think about this. Uh, I kind of rushed through it and I totally did not edit this video whatsoever other than I put the two recordings in the X split. So I don't have some giant script. I have these like pizza things here. These pizza things totally gave me the motivation to do this. Anyways guys, peace out.